a Gwinnett County teenager murdered and left in the woods less than a year ago is being remembered tonight on what would have been her birthday. On a sweltering summer evening in Norcross, Georgia, 16-year-old Susanna Morales disappeared without a trace. It was July 26, 2022. The dangers faced by vulnerable children walking alone are a pressing issue. Every day, countless children find themselves in precarious situations as they navigate their surroundings without proper supervision and protection. This exposes them to a range of potential risks, from accidents and injuries to encounters with strangers, or shall I say police officers who have malicious intent. On a fateful summer evening in Norcross, Georgia, a perplexing incident unfolded leaving the community in a state of disbelief. 16-year-old Susanna Morales, a seemingly ordinary teenager, inexplicably vanished into thin air. It was the 26th of July, 2022, when Susanna walked on her journey home after a brief visit to a friend residing a few blocks away. Despite the late hour, around 10 p.m., her family initially felt no cause for alarm. Given the short distance of less than half a mile, along a well-illuminated road within the confines of the small, safe Norcross community, Susanna's return was assumed to be in a matter of a mere minutes. However, as time passed and Susanna failed to arrive, apprehension slowly began to take hold, casting a shadow of concern over her loved ones. Susanna Morales contacted her mother at approximately 9.40 p.m notifying her of her readiness to depart for her brief journey home and advising that her arrival could be expected within a time frame of 10 to 15 minutes. However, Susanna failed to reach her destination that evening, causing heightened concern within her family. As the minutes elapsed and their attempts to establish communication with her were met with silence. Given their daughter's consistently responsible nature, the family's apprehension intensified, prompting them to promptly seek assistance from the local police station and file a report for her disappearance. However, tragically, the situation took an even more unfortunate turn. The on-duty officers, perhaps due to their limited understanding of teenagers' social behaviors, provided the Morales family with incorrect information. They mistakenly advised them to wait for 48 hours before reporting Susanna as missing. Instead, they suggested that her mother should give it some time, as they believed Susanna would likely return on her own. Despite the police's explanations, the Morales family couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss. They knew their daughter to be reliable and responsible, making it incomprehensible to believe that she would willingly vanish without a trace. In the absence of police assistance, the Morales family took it upon themselves to initiate an independent, urgent search. Recognizing the critical importance of the initial 48 hours in such circumstances, employing methods such as tracking her phone and meticulously retracing her steps, they made a significant breakthrough when they uncovered security footage. The footage captured Susanna's presence just one minute away from her residence before seemingly vanishing inexplicably. While this discovery provided the Morales family with substantial evidence that Susanna was en route to her home, it further intensified the enigma surrounding her disappearance. The family now sought to uncover the precise sequence of events that transpired thereafter, yearning for answers to the perplexing question of what befell Susanna. Despite the mounting evidence, the Morales family faced resistance from the law enforcement officials responsible for ensuring the safety of their community when they returned to the police station to provide their findings. 
Right now, multiple missing women have Atlanta communities desperate to find them. Tonight, the families are speaking out about how you at home can help. Two weeks have passed since 16 year old Susana Morales from Norcross was last seen. The family says they saw her the morning of July 26 and that afternoon she went to a friend's home but never returned back to her house. As you can see here, she was last seen wearing a yellow tank top and light colored jeans. Gwinnett County police say they have labeled the case as a runaway, but her family disagrees. They're now asking the public to be on the lookout in any way they can. They see her, um, the best thing to do is take pictures, send it to call, call the police. Um, but if anything, we're able to recognize her no matter if it's from the side, from the back, from the front. Like the most important thing we need right now is for people to take pictures if you think you see her. Unfortunately, the delayed response from the police severely compromised the investigation, as it took them nearly a month to acknowledge that Susanna was a missing person rather than a runaway. Sadly, the lifeless remains of Susanna Morales were discovered in February 2023, following an arduous seven-month search effort. We're going to begin tonight with breaking news. We can now confirm the remains of 16-year-old Susanna Morales have been found Gwinnett County police say that she was found Monday near Highway 316 between Drowning Creek and Barrow County line. Now, Morales was reported missing from Norcross July of 2022 when she did not return home from a friend's house. Detectives are still investigating the manner and the cause of her death. The skeletal remains of Susanna were found in a wooded area at the border between Gwinnett and Barrow counties. As the investigation progressed, the unsettling truth surrounding Susanna's abduction began to emerge, revealing that her murderer was none other than Miles Bryant, a 22-year-old Georgia police officer. This account unveils the chilling true crime story of Susanna Morales. Susanna Morales, a 16-year-old freshman from Norcross, Georgia, exuded an unmistakable radiance that left a lasting impression on everyone she encountered. In the midst of her peers, Susanna effortlessly stood out due to her infectious smile, empathetic nature, and remarkable musical talent. Her positive and upbeat attitude, coupled with her gentle demeanor, made her a beloved figure among her classmates. Coming from a tight-knit family with a strong support system, Susanna cherished the bonds she shared with her loved ones as the youngest of three siblings. Their time spent together was always cherished and filled with laughter. Whether they were simply enjoying each other's company, watching movies, or grabbing a meal, the Morales family found solace in each other's presence. Despite being a freshman in high school, Susanna's amiable personality garnered her the admiration of her peers, leading her to become a cheerleader. It was clear that her genuine warmth and likable nature made her a cherished member of the school community. She was highly regarded by her colleagues due to her composed demeanor and personable nature. However, it was not solely her tranquil disposition that endeared her to others. In addition to her deep affection for music, Susanna possessed an inherent gift for playing various instruments. Her skills on the piano were well honed, and she quickly acquired proficiency in both the guitar and ukulele. Susanna would gather her loved ones in her private quarters, captivating anyone willing to lend an ear with her enchanting performances. The fusion of her unwavering passion for music and her innate talent bestowed an exceptional charm even upon the most commonplace of circumstances. On Tuesday, July 26, 2022, the Morales family carried on with their daily routine, Susanna taking advantage of her well-deserved break from school amidst the summer vacation sought to recharge her energy. With a strong desire for knowledge and valuable life experiences, Susanna chose to accompany her mother to work for the day. Seizing the opportunity to maximize her vacation time and earn some additional income. Unbeknownst to them, the gravity of the day or the dreadful events that would follow mere hours later, the mother and daughter diligently worked side by side, fulfilling their respective responsibilities and cherishing the precious moments they shared together. Susanna and her mother returned home at approximately 4 p.m. that afternoon. After freshening up, having supper, and taking a moment to relax, 
Susanna politely inquired with her mother at 6 p.m. if she could visit one of her closest friends, who resided just half a mile away. With her mother's approval, Susanna embarked on a familiar 10-minute walk to her friend's residence at the Sterling Glen Apartments. This journey was one she had made numerous times before. Shortly after 6 p.m., she bid farewell to her mother and made her way to her friend's place, arriving there promptly 10 minutes later. As customary, she promptly texted her mother to inform her of her safe arrival. The two friends indulged in several hours of engaging conversation, laughter, and enjoyable companionship, causing time to effortlessly slip away. It wasn't until well past 9.30 p.m. that they realized Susanna needed to make her way back home. Informed of her plans, Susanna sent her mother another text message at 9.40 p.m., expressing her intention to commence her return journey and assuring her arrival within the next 10 to 15 minutes. Susanna's mother, who was awake at the time, patiently waited until her daughter was safely in bed before retiring for the night. However, as the minutes passed without Susanna returning home after sending a text over 15 minutes ago, her mother's anxiety began to grow. There was an immediate sense that something was amiss. With each passing moment, her mother's mind raced with worst-case scenarios, causing her to anxiously watch the clock. Each minute that elapsed without any communication from her daughter caused her heart to sink further. The hours seemed to fly by, quickly turning into minutes, and before she knew it, the next morning had arrived without a single word from Susanna. When Susanna's family found themselves unable to reach her, with her phone going straight to voicemail, and no one having seen or heard from her, her mother took immediate action, concerned for her daughter's well-being. She promptly went to the police station that very morning to officially report Susanna as missing. However, what the Morales family encountered at the police station was far from what they expected. Instead of receiving the support and assistance they sought, they were met with unexpected resistance from the very individuals entrusted with safeguarding their community. The officer on duty callously informed them that they should wait 48 hours before reporting Susanna's disappearance, dismissing their genuine fears and concerns as mere manifestations of typical teenage behavior. The officer insensitively suggested that teenage girls often run off with their parents or stay out late at parties. However, Susanna's family knew better. They knew that Susanna had not taken any personal belongings with her, not even a change of clothes, and that it was completely out of character for her not to inform her family of her whereabouts. Despite this, the authorities persisted in treating her case as that of a runaway, disregarding the family's firm belief that a crime had taken place. Furthermore, they demonstrated reluctance in issuing a statement about Susanna's disappearance or engaging with the community to request assistance in locating the missing 16-year-old. Consequently, the Morales family experienced an increasing sense of frustration and desperation, realizing that they could not rely on the police alone. They took matters into their own hands by creating and distributing their own flyers, hoping that someone within the community would be able to provide the crucial assistance they desperately needed. Persistence finally paid off for the Morales family when a local business in the area stepped forward with crucial security camera footage. The footage was a significant breakthrough as it clearly showed Susanna walking home just after 10 p.m., mere moments before she was expected to arrive at her residence. What intrigued the Morales family was the proximity of this business to their home, as it became evident that Susanna had indeed been on her way back home, confirming her last text message. The realization struck the family that something must have occurred to Susanna during the short interval between passing the store and her estimated one-minute walk to her residence. Additionally, the family successfully utilized a GPS app on Susanna's phone to trace her last known movements. The data indicated that she had been walking along Singleton Road between 10.07 and 10.21 p.m., heading towards her residence on Windscape Village Lane. However, an unexpected turn of events transpired. 
Susanna's phone registered another ping at 10.26 p.m. near Oak Locked Trace, which was in the opposite direction of her home and located nearly a mile away from her previous location. The concerned family promptly relayed this crucial information to the authorities who, albeit reluctantly, acknowledged the likelihood that Susanna had entered a vehicle at approximately 1021 and traveled towards Oak Lock Trace. However, despite the mounting evidence suggesting foul play, the police exhibited hesitancy in formally declaring Susanna as a missing person. Undeterred, the family diligently worked to keep Susanna's case in the public eye, actively seeking the support of various news agencies to shed light on her disappearance. Through their unwavering determination and the amplifying power of social media, Susanna's story gained significant traction, exerting considerable pressure on the police to take decisive action. Eventually, the mounting pressure became impossible to ignore leading to a long-awaited press release on August 29, 2022, officially declaring Susanna as a missing person a month after her disappearance. The Morales family's unwavering determination had finally yielded results, though they were acutely aware that the path ahead would be arduous and unpredictable. Regrettably, precious time had been lost in the quest to locate Susanna, yet they remained hopeful that progress would be made from this point onward. However, their aspirations were met with disappointment as the case failed to progress as swiftly as anticipated. It would be six months before the authorities would reach out to them once more, this time requesting a DNA sample from Susanna's mother and dental records. This peculiar request confirmed the Morales family's worst fears. The search was no longer focused on finding a missing person, but rather a body. Unfortunately, their apprehensions would eventually become reality on February 6, 2023, nearly seven months after Susanna's disappearance. Her lifeless body was discovered in a wooded area between Drowning Creek and Barrow County. Subsequent medical examinations confirmed that Susanna had tragically passed away between 10 p.m. on July 26, the day she had vanished, and 2 a.m. on July 27. After conducting thorough investigations at the scene, law enforcement officers made a significant discovery only a short distance from the deceased body of Susanna. A handgun was found leading the police to believe that it was somehow connected to the case. Recognizing its potential importance as evidence, they proceeded to collect the firearm and trace its serial number, ultimately uncovering a revelation that would deeply unsettle the Norcross community. The serial number tracing led them to 22-year-old Dorville police officer Miles Bryant. This revelation shocked the fellow officers, prompting them to recognize the urgency of investigating one of their own. Further scrutiny of Bryant revealed a peculiar coincidence. He had reported his gun stolen just two hours after the Morales family had reported Susanna missing. According to his report, Brian claimed that he had inadvertently left his truck door unlocked, allowing someone to gain access and steal not only his vehicle, but also his weapon, military ID, and wallet. Additionally, it came to light that Miles resided in the same apartment complex where Susanna's friend was staying and where she was last seen prior to her disappearance. The accumulation of evidence began to strengthen the case against Bryant. Consequently, on February 13th, one week after Susanna's body was discovered, law enforcement took the necessary steps to apprehend Miles Bryant. Subsequently, he faced charges of concealing Susanna Morales' death and providing false information about the reported crime. The arrest warrant alleged that Bryant had disposed of Morales' lifeless body in the wooded area of between Drowning Creek and Barrow County following his earlier fabrication of a car break-in and the theft of the firearm from within the vehicle. According to the police, it is believed that Susanna Morales had no prior connection with Miles Bryant. However, following his arrest, it came to light that Bryant had a history of stalking and harassment, as well as previous charges of maladministration. We begin with breaking news we are following right now tonight at 11. We have been getting more details all night long about a now former officer charged in the death of a Gwinnett County teen. 
Within the last couple of hours, we learned Miles Bryant has been fired from the Dorval Police Department and he is expected in court tomorrow morning. And that former officer is now charged with concealing the death of Susanna Morales. 11 Alive's Don White just spoke with her sister. Don, what is she saying? Ron and Jennifer, ja Jasmine Morales says that today was particularly hard for the family already because it was Susanna's funeral. But to hear that a police officer is now charged in connection with their death makes her even more sadder and angrier. A beautiful 16 year old girl, Susanna Morales, was laid to rest Monday. I said it was hard. Even harder for the family is finding out this man, 22 year old Doraville police officer Miles Bryant, is behind bars in connection to Susanna's death. He's charged with concealing the death of another and a false report of a crime. Completely shocked, honestly. It's. I have no words, honestly. It just. I didn't expect it. We didn't expect it. We didn't, we didn't know what to expect, but. Um, the officer was probably like the least on my mind of theories. Police and Susanna's family say they don't know of any connection between the officer and teen. I want to know everything, honestly. And that's what we're waiting for. We're waiting for all, all the truth to come to light and to piece everything together and finally get the closure that we've been wanting for for so long. The investigation is still ongoing, and if there's further charges in the future, those will be known. As of right now, it's still early in the investigation to determine any more charges. Susanna's remains were found last week near the Gwinnett Barrow County line. She went missing on July 26th. Now the family is focusing on how they want Susanna to be remembered. Despite previous allegations being brought to the attention of the police, only minimal action was taken against Bryant. In 2022, around the same time Susanna went missing, another woman approached the Dorville police station, reporting that she had been stalked by Bryant and that he had attempted to break into her home. She mentioned that she had known Bryant since fifth grade, but they grew apart as they got older. After reconnecting briefly and realizing they had little in common, the woman distanced herself from him. Since then, Bryant's behavior became increasingly aggressive, leading to stalking and harassment. The woman felt constantly watched and even experienced an attempted break-in, resulting in damage to her door panel. She sought assistance from a neighbor who had a security camera, and upon reviewing the footage, she identified a person she believed to be Bryant attempting to break into her home. Despite his attempts to conceal his identity, one frame captured him looking directly at the camera. Bryant's behavior exhibited an alarming level of aggression and intimidation, causing genuine fear for the safety of the lady involved. Consequently, she felt compelled to acquire a firearm for self-protection. Despite reporting his behavior to the Dorville Police Department, their response was rather limited, consisting only of a stern conversation with Bryant. It is worth noting that Bryant had previously faced accusations in 2018 of attempting to break into a neighbor's house through a window. Although the neighbor promptly contacted the police, Bryant denied any wrongdoing upon their arrival, leading to a decision by the neighbor not to press charges. As a result, no further action was taken in that particular instance. In another incident that occurred in October 2022, Brian faced formal charges internally within the department for his actions, specifically for maladministration. The charges stemmed from his involvement to handling a report concerning a missing child where he was responsible for its preparation. Unfortunately, Bryant took an unacceptably long period of three days to complete the report, despite federal law mandating it to be finalized within two hours. Consequently, during those three days, there was no official record of the child being reported missing, and Bryant faced disciplinary action. Regrettably, it remains uncertain whether the missing child was eventually located or not. On February 23, 2023, Miles Bryant attended a court hearing where he received the notification of an upgrade in his charges. In addition to the initial charges, he was now accused of the murder and kidnapping of Susanna Morales. And tonight, former Doraville police officer Miles Bryant remains behind bars after Gwinnett County Superior Court judge denied his latest request for bond. Bryant is charged with the killing of 16 year old Susanna Morales and 11 Alive's Brittany Klein Peter has the details of what happened in that courtroom today. 
Dozens of family members and friends of Susanna Morales showed up to the hearing this morning. Also in the gallery were the parents and grandparents of Miles Bryant. There wasn't an open seat in that hearing and understandably so, emotions were high. Good morning, are you Miles Bryant? I go, ma'am. Okay, is that a yes? Yes, ma'am. Okay, that's okay. As Bryant entered the courtroom handcuffed with his waist shackled, one of his family members broke down in tears and walked out of the courtroom. The prosecution then described incidents of Bryant using his position of power as a Doraville police officer to commit, quote, sexually deviant acts, including breaking into women's homes and stealing their underwear, and on one occasion accessing a woman's phone to steal sexual videos. While he was on duty and in uniform, asked her to utilize her cell phone because he needed to log into his bank, and instead of doing so, he accessed her videos and sent himself videos of conducting sexual activity on her phone. The prosecution continued to describe other incidents, including the stalking of Alicia Bates back in December. Bates previously talked with 11 Alive about the incident. Uh, afterwards, the defendant repeatedly showed up to her apartment, would put his ear to the door to try to listen in on conversations inside. The prosecution saying while Bryant doesn't have a criminal record, he's displayed a pattern of threatening behavior towards women for years. He is a danger to women in this community. He is a uh, has has not upheld the oath that he took to protect and serve both the citizens of Doraville and the state of Georgia. Bryant's attorney did push back against the state's claims. As is always in a criminal case, there is another side to some of these allegations. The judge quickly decided to deny Bryant's bond. He is facing multiple charges, including kidnapping and murder. In Gwinnett County, Brittany Kleinpeter, 11 Alive News. Bryant's legal term indicating their intention to file for his release on bond. The motion for the bond hearing has been scheduled for May 1st, 2023. Unfortunately, his request for bond was denied. Furthermore, it has come to light that the Doraville Police Department has terminated Miles Bryant from his position within the force. I would greatly value your insights and feedback on this particular case. Kindly share your questions and comments in the designated section below.